Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on equilibrium. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're talking about the relationship between Kc and Kp. Okay? Kc is for concentration, and those are things in solution. And Kp is for pressure, and those are going to be gases. All right? So that's just a little summary here. Okay? But we're really going to fine-tune fine what the difference between Kc and Kp are, and then we're going to give some examples. And don't forget, at the very end of this video, I got a great chemistry joke here for you. So hold on until the very end with a great hat. All right, here we go. So for solutions, we got this um, equation here. And that is A plus B gives me C plus D. Okay, I've got my A, B, C, and D are going to be formulas. Those are representing formulas. The W, X, Y, and Z are representing the stoichiometric coefficients. You notice since this is for solutions, then everything is going to be aqueous. So you should be able to write the K expression for this. And this is called the Kc because these are in solution. Everything's in solution. So that's products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. So that's why you have the brackets representing concentration, which is typically molarity if it's otherwise not stated. Okay, so brackets with the C to the power of Y, that's the exponent. Okay, D in brackets to the power of D, that's also the exponent and the stoichiometric coefficient, divided by A to the W, B to the X. Okay, all right, hopefully that works out well for you. It's pretty simple. Products over reactants, stoichiometric coefficients as exponents, these are all in solution, so therefore they're all aqueous, therefore the brackets. Okay, now, for gases, instead of solutions, we're going to have A, B, C, and D now all be gases and not be in solution. We still have the same stoichiometric coefficients that we had on the solution problem, except they're W, X, Y, and Z for the stoichiometric coefficient for the gases. Same deal. Now we're going to write the K expression for this, but since these are in since these are gases, then this is going to be a Kp. And we're not going to have the brackets because the brackets really represent moles per liter or molarity. So pressure is going to be P for pressure. So that's why it's Kp. So it's Pc to the Y. It's still to the power of, so it's still products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. And then it's Pd to the Z divided by Pa to the W times PB to the X. So hopefully you see the difference between KC and KP. Okay, the P is for pressure, the C is for concentration, and I've got brackets on the concentration, I got P for the pressure. So now we need a relationship between the KC and the KP. So PV equals NRT. This is the ideal gas law right here. Okay, and P is for pressure, V is for volume, N is for number of moles, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature. What we're going to do with this ideal gas law is we're going to rearrange this and solve for pressure. So we're going to divide both sides by volume, and this is what we are going to get. P is equal to NRT over V. Okay, now we're going to modify this slightly here, okay, and um, we're going to rearrange, well not really rearrange it, but we're just going to modify it. So now it's P is equal to CRT. Hmm, what is C? So what is C? C is actually the quotient of the N and the V. N is number of moles, V is the volume, that is going to be in liters, so that's moles per liter, which is a concentration, that's why it's C for concentration. Hopefully you got that. So if we carry this forward, Okay, and we look for A. If we just look for A in solution here, we got P of A, and that's the pressure of A, is equal to A in brackets, that's for solution, times RT. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Pressure of A is equal to the concentration of A times the RT. Okay, so all I've done is I've substituted in the P equals CRT equation. Okay, P of A, and then the C is replaced with the brackets in concentration of A times the RT. So I've just substituted into there for you. Now we're going to expand this for both A, B, C, and D, for all of those. Okay, and this is what we get. We get the Kp is equal to concentration of products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. So the concentration of C in brackets 
RT to the y power times D, that's concentration, that's moles per liter, times RT to the z power divided by A, okay, in brackets, because that's the concentration, RT to the W divided by B in brackets, RT to the X, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull some things out of here, okay? We're going to pull out the C, D, A, and B with their respective stoichiometric co coefficients, which are exponents now of Y, Z, W, and X. We brought out the RT and the Y plus Z and the W plus X. Hopefully that math works out well for you. Now we're going to rearrange this just a little bit more here. Okay, KP and KC. So you should see that this is the KC. That's what we got previously when I first talked about solutions right there in the upper left-hand corner of this slide. The KC is equal to the C to the power of Y, D to the power of Z, A to the power of W, B to the power of X. Okay, and then the rest of this is RT and then a difference in the number of moles. So what's the... Um, relationship between KC and KP. KP is equal to KC times RT dealt to the power of delta N. And delta N is the change in the number of moles. And just like any change in, if we have the change in temperature, it's always the final minus the initial, which in this case, the change in the number of moles is equal to the number of moles of products minus the number of moles of reactants. So it's the difference of the number of moles of products and reactants. Okay? So that's the relationship between Kc and Kp. Okay? Know this. And now I'm going to give you some examples of which you can see how this is played out. Okay? All right. So there's our relationship between Kp and Kc. And notice it's a difference or a change in the number of moles, products minus reactants. Okay, I got this equation here. Okay, and I got H2 plus Cl2 gives me 2HCl. Okay, the change in the number of moles, that is the products, that's 2 minus the number of moles of reactants, that's 1 plus 1. Okay, that's 0. So therefore, Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the 0 power. And any number to the power of zero is equal to one, okay? So the RT portion of this is one. So now you have KP is equal to KC. So that is when there is no change in the number of moles of gas from products to reactants, then the KP and the KC are the same, okay? It's the only time that the KP and the KC are the same is when the change in the number of moles is zero, okay? Let's do another one. We got another equation here. We got a reactant. We got two products now this time. Okay, the delta N or the change in the N is the number of moles of products, which is one plus one minus the one mole of reactant. So now I have a change in N of one, change in number of moles of one. So Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the first power. Okay, so we actually do multiply the Kc times the Rt in this case to acquire the Kp. Or if we wanted to get the Kc, then we take the Kp divided by the Rt. Simple as pi, okay? Here's another example. And this is a famous equation. We're going to be talking about this equation a lot in this unit. But I got nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gas molecules produces two ammonia, okay? And so the delta N on this one, or the change in the number of moles of products minus reactants, is two minus one plus three. That's minus... Two. Okay, so our uh, relationship between Kc and Kp is the following. So Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the negative 2. All right, hopefully that works. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see how this plays a role in an actual numeric value with the problem and using this. So what is the Kp for the reaction when Kc is 1.2 at 375 degrees Celsius? Here's the equation. I got nitrogen plus hydrogen gives me ammonia. Okay. So Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the change in N. Okay. So Kp is equal to 1.2. That is the Kc. R is the gas constant. That's why it's 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin times the temperature. The temperature, I've converted the 375 degrees Celsius into Kelvin because that way the units cancel out, and that's 648. 
Now it's to the power, the RT portion is to the power of negative two, okay? And then this is the value that I get here for the KP. Notice that the KC is a number that is uh, greater than one, therefore it's product favored, and the KP is less than one and is reactant favored. Hmm. Very, very interesting, especially when there's a difference in the number of moles of the products and the reactants. That's what's important here between the KC and the KP. Okay, hopefully you should be able to derive the KC if given the KP, knowing that equation highlighted in the yellow there. Okay, all right, so here's some chemistry humor that you've been waiting for, and of course, a hat. Okay, I love this hat because this is a Dr. Seuss hat. Everybody needs a Dr. Seuss hat. So, a little bit of chemistry humor. So you're gonna ask yourself, well, Mr. Malpreon, have you gone over organic chemistry? I don't know if I have or haven't, but this is an organic chemistry molecule. So how do you say no to your date? You're like, if someone asks you to go on a date or something like that, you're like, no, I really don't wanna go. Well, maybe you need to say it a little bit more strongly, okay? And here's how you say it strongly, with just one word. Just say hexa nitrobenzene hexa nitrobenzene. That's all you gotta say, because with this one word, you can say no six times with one word. That is beautiful to say no to your date. That's if you really wanna say no to them forcefully, but without being so forceful, you let them down easily, but six times. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please pass on my YouTube channel to all your friends. Let them know about it. Look on my website for some merchandise, okay? Maybe some t-shirts or some stickers that you definitely want. And I will see you next time for some more cool chemistry videos. Bye for now.